Hey everyone, welcome to Multiverse West here. And before we start this video, a quick spoiler alert, if you have not seen Infinity War, click off the video and come back whenever you've actually seen it. But let's be honest guys, if you've not seen Infinity War at this point, then it's kind of your fault that you're clicking on the video anyway. Be sure to enter our monthly giveaway. For this month, we're gonna be giving away 10 tickets to see the new Ant-Man movie. It's really easy to enter. All you have to do is like the video, subscribe to the channel, turn your post notifications on for a chance to win. Leave a comment on why you wanna win with your Twitter handle attached, and I will pick the winner at the end of the month. Good luck. Now, following the events of Infinity War, the Marvel Cinematic Universe is in a bit of a tough spot. Thanos has proven himself to be the strongest being in the entire galaxy, and he is willing to wipe out half of existence. The Avengers are going to need to regroup and figure out a new plan if they want to take him down in Avengers 4. But what about the villains? Surely they're not happy about what Thanos is doing either. What's up guys, welcome to Multiverse. I'm your host Wes, and today we're gonna to be talking about these 10 villains that could come after Thanos in Avengers 4. Number 10, The Ravagers. Kicking off our list is a group of bandits and criminals who played a big part in the Guardians of the Galaxy movies. Formerly led by Yondu, The Ravagers found a new respect for the Guardians of the Galaxy at the end of Volume 2. Well, given that almost all of the Guardians die at the end of Infinity War, Rocket Raccoon may call upon the Ravagers, or what's left of them, to help try to take down Thanos in a surprise attack. The Ravagers have proven to be pretty strong when it's demanded of them, and given that the Avengers are in shambles now, they're going to need all the help they can get. Number 9, Red Skull. Next up, we have a character who made a brief appearance in Infinity War as the Guardian of the Soul Stone. Throughout the comics, Red Skull has been fascinated with the Infinity Stones, and there was even a universe in which he stole all of them from Thanos because he was so desperate to control them. Following the events of Infinity War, Red Skull may find Thanos' treatment of the stones power to be unworthy of their control and try to get them from him. Or perhaps Thanos will try to revive Gamora in a way that justifies Red Skull coming to take the Soul Stone back from him, since Thanos was forced to sacrifice Gamora in order to get the stone in the first place. Whatever the reason may be, we know for sure that Red Skull is interested in the stones, and after Thanos wipes out half the existence, he definitely has motivation to try to get them back. Number 8, the Chitauri. The Chitauri are a race of cybernetically enhanced aliens who served Thanos but were first introduced to the Marvel Cinematic Universe when Loki took control of them to attack Earth. However, after Thanos massacred half of existence in the galaxy, it's very possible that the Chitauri may start to question their alliance to the Mad Titan. After all, there's no doubt that many of the Chitauri were killed by Thanos after his big finger snap. And when you're the leader of a massive army, it's usually not the best idea to kill a bunch of them. Number seven, Ultron. While Ultron may be dead in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, it's not really that simple. Throughout Avengers Age of Ultron, Ultron made it pretty clear that he was already in the cloud and that he was insanely powerful. And the way that Vision killed the final Ultron bot didn't exactly make it clear if that was truly Ultron that died or if it was just another bot. Given how powerful Ultron was in the movie, I think it's safe to say that if he still exists somewhere, and since he's a power-hungry being who wants to see humanity burn, there's no doubt he'll be interested in getting the Infinity Stones from Thanos. In one Marvel Universe, Ultron even got all of the Infinity Stones and drained them of their power. So perhaps that could be something that happens in Avengers 4. That would definitely be an interesting end to their power. Number 6, Ego. This is another character that we saw die in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but given the insane power that he was shown to have, there's still a possibility that he's still out there and simply regrouping from the damage he took. In Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, Ego was revealed to be Star-Lord's father, which explains all of Peter's insane abilities. Ego is a powerful celestial who is set on traveling throughout the universe and planting bits of himself on every known planet, recreating them in his vision, but also killing billions of people in the process. At the end of the movie, the Guardians were able to take him down, but come on, this guy is a celestial. Surely he's strong enough to come back from all of that, right? No, maybe. Either way, 
If Ego is still out there during the events of Infinity War, he was no doubt upset at Thanos' actions because they directly conflict with his plans to recreate the galaxy. So we may see a showdown between the two. Number 5, Nebula. While it's a little unfair to call Nebula a villain, she definitely isn't a hero either. So we'll go ahead and put her on this list anyways. Nebula is the daughter of Thanos and has a very strong hatred of him due to the years and years of torture that she had to endure at his hand. Following Thanos' massacre at the end of Infinity War, Nebula was one of the only people on Titan to survive. So you can bet she's going to be taking this opportunity to go after her father one last time. Number 4, Galactus. Now, Galactus is an extremely powerful Marvel villain who is actually yet to show up in the MCU. However, with the way that the Disney and Fox merger is going, we may actually get some Fox characters in Avengers 4, and if that's the case, we may see Galactus coming for Thanos. Galactus exists off consuming entire planets, and if Thanos continues to be bloodthirsty and kill millions and millions of people, Galactus soon won't have any more fuel. With the insane scale that things have gotten to in Infinity War, I wouldn't be surprised if Marvel brings Galactus to the big screen to have a showdown with Thanos. Number 3, The Sovereign. Introduced in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, The Sovereign are an extremely advanced race of people who pride themselves on being the best and most perfect beings around. Following their conflicts with the Guardians of the Galaxy in the second movie, they were outraged by the way that they had been treated and insulted by other races, and they even teased the creation of Adam Warlock in response to this. The High Priestess is not about to let anyone be above her and get away with it, and following the likelihood that many of her people died at the hand of Thanos' snap following Infinity War, you can bet your ass that she's pissed off and looking for revenge. Number 2, MODOK. MODOK is a long-running villain in the Marvel comics whose name stands for Mechanized Organism Designed Only for Killing. He first appeared in Tales of Suspense 93, published in 1967, and was further fleshed out in the Captain America series. In fact, he was even considered to be the main villain of Captain America Civil War, with Peter Dinklage playing the role. But this idea was canned and Dinklage was later given a different role in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. But that doesn't mean that MODOK won't be appearing. In fact, I would argue it means the opposite. The Marvel Cinematic Universe writers have been experimenting with ways to get MODOK in on the action in the past. And what way would be better than having him appear to Thanos after the events of Infinity War as he attempts to outwit him and get the Infinity Stones for himself? Number 1, Lady Death. Now, Lady Death is a character who has appeared throughout the Marvel comics and has played a pretty big part in Thanos' initial rise to villainy, as he started doing many of his destructive deeds in an attempt to win her love. And in the original Infinity Gauntlet storyline, he even uses six stones to wipe out half of existence to try to win her over. Now, the backstory behind Thanos' desire to kill half the existence is different in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, as this version of Thanos is doing it for the sake of the galaxy's resources, but there is still a chance that Lady Death may appear in Avengers 4. Perhaps she is impressed by Thanos' massacre and appears to him, or maybe she feels threatened by his power and confronts him. There's obviously no way to know for sure, but given how integral Lady Death is to Thanos' story in the comics, it seems pretty likely that she'll appear in one way or another in Avengers 4, and it probably won't be pretty. Now that's going to wrap it up with the 10 villains that could go after Thanos in Avengers 4. If you guys enjoyed this video, do us a favor, like the video, subscribe to the channel, turn your post notifications on, and tell us which villain you think is the most likely to go after Thanos in Avengers 4. Be sure to sound off in the comments below. Guys, we have a Discord server and we have a Twitter, so be sure to check the links in the description if you guys want to join those. And if you're interested in winning our newest giveaway, we're giving away 10 tickets to see an awesome movie, so go to the start of the video to find out more information about that. And if you guys have suggestions for future top 10s that you want to see on the Multiverse Hub, be sure to let us know about that as well. Thank you guys all once again for watching. This has been Wes, and I will see you guys next time in the Multiverse.